So in this scene, poor Tom as, takes Gloucester to what he thinks is the edge of the cliff. But instead of taking him actually to Dover, he describes the cliff, gives a very vivid description of the cliff, such that Gloucester believes he's there at the edge of the cliff and he jumps to what he hopes is his death. And so we thought that it would be very interesting to have an artistic impression, a sort of a way of imagining or reimagining this scene so as to bring out something of its strangeness, something of its metaphysical strangeness, something of the paradox of an action which is at one and the same time pure imagination and actual. And the reason we're doing Poor Tom is the idea that, is that Poor Tom is a figure that embodies the that whole question of the relationship between living and dying. So the three canvases all show a figure who, in effect, is a cipher for poor Tom. On the first canvas, you have a figure who is clearly on some kind of edge, on some kind of verge. And he is looking down across this edge at this uh, vertiginous drop and in this kind of deluge that is full of grids of drowning figures, all of whom feel like fractures of him. They, so it's like he's looking down at um, kind of a box of mirrors or a kaleidoscope. And then the other two paintings in some ways could be seen as kind of macro versions of that, as if they've zoomed in on one possibility of that picture. And one of the things about that scene is it, it shows Edgar, or poor Tom, sending th these imaginary eyes into all these other figures. There's, there's, there's a samphire gatherer halfway down the cliff. There's a tiny, tiny boat out on the sea, the unnumbered pebbles on the shore. And so he, he, he imagines all these other lives and all these other lives become sort of projections of his own. And he fears that he's going to fall down headlong. It's sort of a, a scene of, of, of real vertigo, of a temptation to leap. The, the cabinet's kind of full of fascinating images, fascinating texts, but the, the object that particularly captured my attention and has fed directly into these paintings is a, an illustration of a medical theatre in which there's a corpse lying at the very centre and then obviously this circular spread of seats where the students would be sitting and watching the body be dissected to learn their lessons. And it evokes nothing so much as, as a theatre itself and suggests the way in which the theatre becomes a sort of microcosm of living and dying. One of the paintings initially was going to be the lonely figure lying on the stage and it was going to be in a total kind of black backdrop. And it's ended up actually being this picture that is almost utterly submerged by an abstract weather storm. So it's pushed it to the absolute opposite end where it's uh, an image that only just holds on to even the notion of the figure being there or, or existing. And then the final one was seeking to imagine Gloucester when he had jumped. Gloucester's lying there on the stage floor, somehow uncertain as to his own existential status. It's a remarkable moment. And then Edgar comes upon the, the fallen figure of his blinded father and says, alive or dead. And I think it's a moment of genuine terror and doubt. And this is Shakespeare pushing at the possibility of dying on stage but also testing the, the idea of what might it be to not know whether you're living or dying. If the three paintings explore the cliff edge in particular and Paul Tom at the cliff edge, then the second part of the exhibition that we've worked on is a collection of images of postcards. There's 15 of them and each one sees Paul Tom in a different guise, in a different light, everything from a disguise through to a kind of a metaphor of of life or mortality itself. Some of the cards are photographs of Tom's from Tom's triptych. Some of them are sort of magnifications of particular details with 15 pieces of text from me drawn from the book, my, my book called Poor Tom. Really, they're kind of 15 portraits of a character who's got this hugely complex and divided identity. Tom is a sort of ghost lost from a sort of soul. He turns like a corkscrew in previsions of death. No ground beneath feet, no stop to the fall, life tripped abject in the pitiless curb. He feels his body unable to rise, flush slowly down a waterless drain to an end that is no end. He chases himself like a dog its tail, accusing himself, feeding upon phantoms, his shadow as substantial as his body. An unremitting torture, in life and after it, without hope of rest.